Uh, so I'll go straight to the word of God. And I have the, top, uh, the, the topic that I would like us, uh, the, uh, the sermon has the topic, so good seeds that bear much fruit. So good, good seeds that bear much fruit. Or plant good seeds that bear much fruit. I know in the recent past, uh, we have been going through the theme, uh, man, uh, man, manifestation of the sons of God. And uh, uh, it has been a, a great blessing. And this ministry has been, uh, has been picked from uh, Romans 8 verse 19. And uh, the word of God reminds us that for the earnest expectation of the creation, eagerly awaits, awaits for the revelation of the sons of God. And I remember on Wednesday, our brother Patrick Mutahi was reminding us the many things uh, that uh, sons of God do. And one of the things he was remi reminding us that it's not the children who, uh, who are manifested, but the sons of God. These are those who are mature uh, and, uh, uh, and, and start bearing fruits. So the manifestation of the sons of God is the purpose and destiny of every born again believer. So God desires that we manifest as his sons. So God desires for each one of us to be fruitful. So if there is something that God would desire from each one of us, is that we be fruitful. Uh, so, uh, but we cannot bear much fruit unless we sow or plant the right seeds. We need to, to sow or plant the right seeds for us to be fruitful. So a seed is usually one, but we know that harvest or a fruit has usually much. We can get an example like uh, a maize. You just plant one maize, but later it's usually a maize cob. So it has much. So, and uh, Jesus, when Jesus was speaking to the disciples in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20, he was talking about the false, uh, false prophets and he was saying that you'll know them by their fruits. So the word of God says that beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather uh, grabs, grapes and thorn bushes or fig tree from tissues? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So even for us as sons of God, by our fruits, we will be known what kind of people you are. So we need to mind what life are we living? Are we living as Christians? Are we representing well the kingdom of God? That is a question that we all need to answer. And in John 15, uh, verse 4 and 8, John 15, verse 4 and 8, uh, Jesus reminded the disciple in, in NIV, uh, John 15, verse 4 and 8, uh, the word of God says that remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you, may, you, you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. So Jesus there from that scripture is reminding us that indeed he is the true vine and we are the branches. And he was reminding the disciples that when they bear much fruit, it will be to the Father's glory, and they will be showing themselves and the disciples of God. So that's why God requires of us that we bear fruits. Praise the name of Jesus. And I remember last year, uh, in the month of November, the founder of, uh, of Deliverance Church, uh, that is the late uh, Apostle Joe Kayo, uh, uh, there was a memorial which was on 14th of November at Sitam Karen and read a funeral service on 15th of November at Urizi Stadium. 
and uh, what was spoken of him, there was great testimony that was spoken of him. And it was said that he founded the Riverance Church, Kenya and Uganda. He founded Juba, Juba Pentecostal Church and, and helped found Family of God Churches of Zimbabwe. So for him, he was credited for pioneering the Pentecostal faith in, in Africa. That is what he was known for. So, and even today for us here as the Riverance Church, Kasarani Zimmerman, we are part because he planted well. That's why today we are here by the grace of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, this year we know we have the theme of threshing mountains, which is in uh, Isaiah 14 to 16. We are not going to read. But uh, I remember uh, when you look at it in the message version, it, 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 say, it says that God is transforming us from a worm to a harrow. But I remember recently, uh, Reverend Kihato was reminding us that you do not just harrow the land for the sake of it. And the next scripture is key, that is Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28, 23 to 26 in the message version. It says, listen to me now, give me your closest attention. Do farmers prowl and prowl and do nothing but prowl? Or harrow and harrow and do nothing but harrow? After they have prepared the ground, don't they plant? Don't they scatter uh, uh, deal and spread uh, cumin, plant wheat and bury in the fields and uh, rape uh, berries along the boundaries? They know exactly what to do and when to do. Their God is their teacher. So even for us, yes, it's a year of threshing mountains. But we, uh, we are expected to continue to manifest as the sons of God. But how are we going to manifest? By sowing the right seeds. Because when we sow the right, the right seeds, there will be a harvest that will be coming. And uh, uh, we, plant, we plant also seeds to get a harvest. I don't think there is anyone who plants for the sake of it. We all come from uh, backgrounds where our parents plant, or maybe you have seen people planting, but nobody plants for the sake of it. Hata kama ni kilimo biashara, unapanda ndi uweza kupata mavuno mzuri. Sindio? Fruits represent outward manifestation of a seed that has, has germinated and matured. That fruits represent outward manifestation of a seed that has germinated and matured. And uh, as I conclude in this uh, introduction, uh, the word of God in Genesis 8.22, Genesis 8.22, reminds us that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and, uh, and day and night shall not cease. But for us is to pick that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. It, is a, it does not say it will not cease. It says shall not. It's a, that is definite. So it's important that we purpose to sow the right seeds so that we can bear much fruit. And in the next few minutes, I would like to look at uh, what we can do to sow good seeds, uh, the, the, some, some of the ways that we can sow good seeds, some of the few, few, thing, uh, four, few ways that we can be able to sow good seeds. And the first one, is laying a strong spiritual foundation. Laying a strong spiritual foundation or leaving a godly or spiritual heritage. Leaving a strong foundation or leaving a, go, a, a, a godly or spiritual heritage. Uh, for those of us who uh, God has blessed his children and even for those who are potential, so we need to know that children are not good at listening to advice but they are very good imitators. Uh, by the grace of God, have been blessed by four son, with the four sons. The elder one is 27 and a half years. The other one is uh, 23 years, 19 and a half, and 13 years. So when I say that, I'm saying from experience. that children are not good at listening to advice, but they are very good imitators. So therefore, for us as Christians, we need to purpose to be practicing Christians. We should not be just Christians by name but we need to be practicing Christians. And, and by so, so doing, we'll be good examples to our children and to those around us. 
And recently there was a, a, a ministers who came from Park and they were reminding us that you don't just concentrate with uh, your children who are going to marry your children. So you need also to impact others, your neighbors, your family members, and others. Because we need to know that we are stewards. We are stewards. And the word of God in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 to 8, uh, these are, it was Paul who was, uh, 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 who was, who was speaking uh, to his son uh, in faith, uh, Timothy. And the word of God says that I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Royce and your mother Eunice, and, uh, Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to find into frame the gift of God, which is in you through the reign on of my hands. For the spirit gave, uh, spirit, uh, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. So uh, he, uh, he, here, here we see the, the apostle uh, uh, Paul, he had his mentee who was Timothy. And he was uh, reminding him that he had benefited from a strong spiritual foundation. And that's why he was, he was reminding them that uh, your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Royce and your mother Eunice. So this legacy helped prepare and stop Timothy's heart towards faith in Christ. And now Paul urged Timothy to carry on this faith, which was a heritage or a tradition in the family, and to find him to frame the gift of God with him through the Holy Spirit who gives us power. Because the power of the Spirit, Timothy could fiercely live for the gospel. So that was key uh, in the lives of, of Timothy. A strong spiritual legacy doesn't guarantee we will come to faith. But the example and me mentoring of others can prepare the way. So by mentoring of others, by be the example and mentoring of others can be able to help prepare the way for others. That's why we need to live right. And after we receive Jesus as our Savior, the Spirit will guide us in service, in living for Him, and even in nurturing the faith of others. So who are you impacting? As a Christian, who are you impacting? The influence of Paul's grandmother, Royce, and, their, uh, and their, his mother, Eunice, can also be seen in Paul's encouragement to Timothy. And this is in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, that, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. And it says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those, uh, those from whom you have learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So a strong foundation, a strong spiritual heritage is a precious gift. And that is one thing that we need to, uh, to ensure that we are able to pass it over to our children. That they will not reach a time that our children will not know the God that you serve. And therefore it's very important even when you sit to them, we sit with them, you try to bring them and to help them to understand. And my children, from when they were young, I could remind them of the God that we believe in. And I could always remind them that the God we believe in is God the creator. The God who can make something out of nothing. So I, was, I have always reminded them, when I get an opportunity, I remind them of this God whom we serve. That our time will not reach and where they are going to say that I, I, I submit to a, uh, to a superior being. So I like informing them that the God that we believe in, in him is God our creator. But even if our bringing racked, racked the kind of positive influence that helped uh, form Timothy's faith, there are like others in our lives who have profound impact in helping to shape our spiritual development. In addition, we should never forget that we can model sincere faith on those around us and live a legacy of faith. So there is that example of the grandmother of, uh, uh, of Paul and even of the mother. And even me, is only a time that I cannot be able to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, to tell. But also uh, for me, also there was a rich spiritual heritage that was, uh, was left. And uh, last year, uh, in February, my mother rested. And for those who came there, 
they, they, they were able to hear that indeed it was a very rich legacy. And I remember during one of the testimonies by one of the bishops, that is Bishop John Kangi, he gave a testimony and I found my, uh, myself a tear dropping in my eye, not because of the pain, but just marveling uh, of the faith that my mother had. And I remember uh, uh, some of the acts of, of faith that, that, that my mother had. One time everyone had given up on her. But she believed God and God healed her from a stroke that at a doctor who was able to confirm that she One time she did not have tears. Uh, and that was in the 80s. Uh, and that to, to, uh, to, uh, to purchase artificial uh, tears. Siku moja akasema, mungu mimi sijasikia neno yako ya musho. Akachukua karusha kwa cho. That faith na mungu uh, akarestho hiyo machozi. Uh, the testimony Bishop Kangi was giving, ilifika pahari, my, my dad by then was a drunkard. Na ilikuwa imefika pahari sasa kwa sababu ya mekunyo pombe na e, ya deni, sasa hata ilikuwa nataka kuhuza ngombe. But alienda kwa huyo mtumishu wa mungu, haka muambia, mimi na amini, kuja kwangu kwa sababu sasa mambo imiharibika. Na mimi na amini, uki kuja kwangu, mungu atatenda jambo. Hivyo ndi alimuambia. Na wakatule... The bishop has stated, akamwambia mimi, ukikosa kukuja, nitakuja na watoto wangu, sabata atuto waweza kulipa fees. And the bishop went. Na bada ya hiyo, uh, 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 God did miraculous and my father got saved. So even as I stand here, I also have a very rich spiritual foundation. Uh, so the first one you have said is laying a strong foundation or living a godly spiritual heritage. The second one is building covenant, building covenant or meaningful relationships. Building covenant or meaningful relationship. So I found this topic is, is quite wide, this sermon is quite wide, but uh, but I, uh, by the grace of God, I hope you are going to get something out of it. Uh, there is a friend of my dad, and uh, my dad passed on in 2015. And uh, I have always looked at that man uh, as a father, and sometimes he's a professional. So, and uh, one time I went to him, and as we were talking to him, he was telling me how I remind him of my father and uh, how where he is, he is because of my father. Uh, he told me, even where we are in this building, I could not even have come. Your father told me how I'm going, I can be able to start using this building. And even where I live is, is your father also who assisted me. So he told me a lot of things. And then he told me, today I'll tell you a story which I've never told anybody, but it's very profound about your father. So uh, during the time of emergency, uh, people in central, uh, central province could be taken to concentration camps. And uh, uh, when, when it came to people being given runs, people knew that maybe the museum may not come back. So the elder son, ndiyo alikuwa naandikuwa, ndiyo shamba zikitoka, ye ndiyo sasa atakuwa na represent familia. But this elder son, the brother to the friend to my dad, uh, akaa ni mtu wakona pesa na akaa na kiburi. Ikafika pahari, sasa alikuwa nafukuza uh, baba yake, akisema baba yake ni skuota. Wakaenda kotini, na hata vile walienda kotini, akahongana uko na sasa kweri kue na semekana sasa mzee ni, ni skuta. But uh, the, this, this friend uh, of my dad shared with my dad, and my dad gave him a plan. He told, he told him, my brother is an assistant minister, I'll take you to him, and he's going to help us. Uh, so the brother to my dad listened to them, gave them letters of where to go, lakini wa kusaidika. Mzee akamwambia hapana hakuna shida tutaenda hata kwa uh, the second president uh, uh, kule Cabernet Gardens wakaenda huko lakini hawakufaulu so but they never gave up so one time uh, so they started now following up where now the fundraisers were being done and uh, what was happening with the, the president angechukua za watu kama watatu wa kwanza tena anaacha ule mtu atachukua hizo pesa zingine so uh, so my dad gave this uh, this man a plan akamwambia vile utafanya nunulia baba yako suit kali akamnunulia suit kali akamwambia avae shati ya, ya, ya red ya kanu na tai ya kanu wakapika photocopy makaratasi vizuri ambazo zinaelezea kwa wakafanya kasambari kazuri na uh, uh, documents ka red na wakampatia pesa azikuwa pesa mingi, nyingi zilikuwa makaratasi lakini pakawekwa pesa hapa juu so wakamfuata pande moja ya Rift Valley sikumbuki the name wakaenda sasa ule mzee akambu hakikisha we ndio waine, waine akikuona atachukua. So wakati ule ule rafiki ya mzee aliona ule mzee ako karibu kupatia moi hata alienda nyuma ya hema kwa sababu hakutaka kuona baba yake akiumizwa. Aki Lakini eh, eh, president akasikiza uh, akachukua pesa na akasikiza na akasema hii itashughulikiwa akapatia pie wake. 
So that was on a Sunday. On Tuesday morning, kulikuwa na Land Rover mbili kwa hiyo boma. Land Rover ya DC na ya Dio. Na hiyo mambo hata kama ilikuwa imepitishwa kotini, it was overruled na mzee akapatiwa uh, 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 shamba. That, that, that mzee gave me that story and he was almost about to cry. Na, uh, and because I told him I was constructing, kambia nimesimama na tafuta pesa ndiyo nipige koroga, nimepanga kufanya koroga siku furani. Haka niambia nita kununulia mifuko mbili. Lakini hiyo siku, kabla hiyo siku, alinitumia erufu ishirini ndiyo mifuko mbili. Na haka niambia, I have done it for the sake of your father. Turudi kwa scripture. <clears throat> Mbwana atukuzwe. Uh, so, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Uh, so, the word of God says that now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and uh, prostituted himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he, he answered, he, Here is your servant. So, David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. So the kindness was for his father's sake. And we will restore to you and all the land of, of, of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table. And it's good for us. We see that here, Mephibosheth was going to the table of the king for the sake of his father, Jonathan. And where, is this, where was this coming from? Let's go to First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 20. Verse 14 to, um, uh, 14 to 17, and then verse 42. It says that, but, but show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as wrong as I live. This was Jonathan who was speaking to David, so that I may not be killed. No, this was David now. Let's go to verse 14. That was David who was speaking to Jonathan. But show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as wrong as I live, so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when he has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord, the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had, uh, had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him because he loved him uh, as he loved himself. Let's go to verse 42 of the same. Verse 42, it says, Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sown friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and, their descend and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to town. So we can see here about a meaningful relationship and these became covenant brothers. And today that uh, friend of Mze that I have told you about even today, there are many favors that I have been able to enjoy from him. And he always reminds me, I'm not doing it for you, but because of your father. So you can be able to do, uh, to, uh, people, you can ha be able to have, um, uh, you build covenant relationship or meaningful relationship that are going to impact even your generations. Let's go to First Kings chapter 11, verse 9 to 13, and then 34 to 36. Uh, first Kings, it says, So the Lord became angry with Solomon. This is the time that he, uh, uh, because he, him he did not follow, he started uh, worshipping other gods. Because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. And he had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have not done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father David. For the sake of your father David, I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son, for the sake of my servant David, for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have, I have chosen. Let's go to verse 34 and 36 of the same. However, I'll not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, because I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I'll take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you, 
ten, ten tribes. And to his son, I'll give one tribe that my servant David may always have a ramp before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. So we can see because of the, uh, the covenant relationship ship that um, God had with David, because David was a man after uh, God's own heart, we can see that there were blessings that were following Solomon and even the other generations of, uh, of David because of what he did. And finally, in that area is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 to 10. And God here was reminding, uh, 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 Moses was reminding uh, the Israelites that the Lord did not set this, his affection on you or choose you because you are more numerous than other peoples. For you are the fewest of all people. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the odd he sowed to your ancestors, that is to Abraham, uh, Jacob, and Isaac, that he, uh, uh, Isaac and Jacob, that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh's king of, Jude, uh, of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is good. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandment. But those who hate him, he will repay to their face by destruction, he will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate him. So there we have seen about the aspect of building a covenant, a covenant of meaningful relationship that even your generations are able to benefit. Praise the name of Jesus. The third one is by being bridge builders of others. Daraja, bridge builders of others. Bridge builders of others. Being, build, uh, being bridge builders for others is doing acts of kindness to others. And there is this story which I heard from Joel Austin. His father was called John Austin. And uh, it is many years uh, when I heard about it. And his father, John Austin, could always go to missions. And one time they were coming uh, to a mission in Africa. He couldn't recall which country. But at the airport, they cleared first. And when they were getting out, there was a white beggar. You cannot expect a white beggar in an African country. Uh, so that guy was a bit dirty. Uh, but they tried to stop uh, Joel Austin and the other team that was ahead. But they did not, uh, they were not bothered. So what happened is that now when the father came, the, the father stopped and listened to this man. And when he listened to that man, that man informed him that his document, uh, he was accosted by, by, by robbers and all his documents and money was taken. So he doesn't have his uh, travel document. Uh, he doesn't have money, but now he has been able to get a travel document, but does not have money. So his father, John Austin, got into the pocket and removed a hundred dollar note. That is about like now, I think, uh, 14,000. 14, and uh, because Joel Austin, where they were, they, they stood, they were waiting the father. They saw the father removing the $100 note. So uh, when the father reached there, Joel Austin asked, Dad, do you know that man? Uh, Joel Austin told him, no, I don't know that man. Uh, but, this, uh, uh, but why did you give him a $100 note? note? Uh, he told him, the spirit of the Lord prompted me. Joel Austin asked, Dad, you mean giving a stranger a hundred, $100 note? And you're talking many years, since I, that was a, a lot of money then. He said with finority, I have told you, the spirit of the Lord prompted me. So, uh, discussion. So, later, uh, Joel Austin went to a mission in India. Now, after his father now had died and he became the senior pastor. Now, Kaingia interior son of India. As they were coming back, Gariya Ikaharibika. And the natives there, they Nagiza uh, in Ataka Kuingia. And the natives there, they looked hostile. They did not understand English. So, what you imagine, Sasa Giza Kingia, it at Fanikia Nini. So, Wakaona, Pana Sasa Hapa, Mambo Itaharibi. But out of nowhere, I come to travel Bira Kuana Gari, Gari Kakuja Gari Kubwa, Tuneza Sama Kama Nigari Kama V8. Uyo Jama, I come to Jua Kizungu, I come to the end up, Nenda Mukafrani, Narquana Krinia Kuafungia, I come from Gia Gariao, I come to Perkam Baka Kohoteri, Joe Rostin, I come to Kuingia, Konfuka to Kibeti, I come to be, I don't need your money. I have done what was required of me. Uh, I thank God you are safe. That's when the Lord reminded Joel Austin 
your father planted in the life of a stranger. And that's why today, a stranger has planted in your life. Yeah, so we need to be, uh, to be, bu uh, to be bridge builders. Because what we are badala to do is to daraja, kama hata ni kakamba wanataka kukata kamba hile mutu wangevuka nae pande hile ingine. That should not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And when, uh, when Saul of Tarsus met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, he was transformed into an apostle of Christ. However, the Christian community was fearful and not confused about Paul's apparent change of spiritual royalty. It is in this context that Barnabas provided a wonderful service of bridge building. So if we have a good example of bridge building, this is the life of Barnabas. Barnabas was central to Paul's acceptance by supporting Paul's conversion story and accepting him as a brother in Christ. Here we see Barnabas showing the spirit of generosity and encouragement. And the first time the scripture talks about Barnabas is in Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to 37. And um, uh, initially he was called uh, Joseph, uh, a man from Cephas, and he was among the early followers of Jesus. And here he was seen, he had sold a piece of property and donated money to help other believers in need. But let's see this scripture in Acts 9, 26 to 27. 26 to 27. It says, And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them now he had seen the Lord on the road and he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at, uh, at Damascus in the name of the Lord. So here we see uh, uh, here, here, here we, see, we see in this scripture, the apostle Paul would not have never ha had an impact he, um, he did without a man named Barnabas. Barnabas was one of the disciples, and he was in Jesus' inner circle. But this time, people hated, uh, Paul was known as to have hated disciples and was planning to, to throw them in, in prison and having them killed. But when he changed his, his, his life, Barnabas stood up for Paul and used his influence to open a door with the other disciples. Paul went on to write over half of the New Testament. We don't hear much about Barnabas. Paul greatly overshadowed him. But if you were to ask Paul, he would say, I won because Barnabas helped me win. I succeeded because Barnabas took a risk and opened a door that I could not open on my own. Barnabas believed in me when nobody else did. In fact, we need to know that the value of interdependence can never be underestimated. God, in his kindness, graciously provides people as his agent for mutual good. Listening ears, helpful hands, wise comforting and correcting words. These and other resources come to us and through us to others. Together we win and God gets the glory. So we need to be, build, uh, to be bridge builders. Naona muda imenichenga ime, ime lakini nitamalizia na hii lakini uh, I, I, I think it will be, that will be okay. So some of us today are in jobs, business, businesses or prods, courtesy of others. Uh, like now there is a, 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 a gentleman who I connected for internship with one of the members here in the church. Na jamaa ata saa kukaribu kurudi shule. So uh, it's, it's good. So how can you plan to be a blessing to others through an intentional act of encouragement. You may, you may be that other person, a destiny helper. We know that the house help in, no, in Naman's uh, home, yeah, and you are a destiny helper. To, uh, we, we know that uh, uh, for, 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 for even, even Saul, who later became the king, when the donkeys were, were, were lost, there was that guy, uh, the servant who went with him. Yeah, and you are a kukona munabi wa mungu. Ye ndiyo alimuambia wezi enda kwa munabi wa mungu mkono mtupu. Na in fact hata alikuwa mebeba kitu. So you never know who God has brought on your way. Na nimalizie na a testimony of, of, uh, of uh, being a uh, bridge builder. Maybe uneza sikia hiyo jina udhani ni kitu very complicated. And sometimes it just requires you to invite your friend and your neighbor in the house of God. It needs just somebody to tell somebody, apply ni meona hii kazi, si uapply hii kazi. Being a bridge, uh, a bridge, uh, a bridge builder, ahitaji mambo mingi. 
Uh, so you can be able to do that. And, uh, uh, and uh, allow me to just give a testimony. Uh, I worked uh, in the company that I was working in. Uh, we, were, we were working in shift. And to uh, shift, so one time to work at Merana Viatu, and we are going home in the morning. And we are, when we are going home in the morning, I was living in Kayoro, we reached Umoja. And uh, a gentleman that we are, we are sitting with, who was called David Mwangi, we are living with him in Kayore, he asked me, hey, Solomon, where do you go to church? Nikamwambia mimi huwa naenda, uh, AIC Jericho, na saa zingine SK pare, uh, pare Kyoi. Akaniambia, sasa, mina endanga derivance, tumeko tukikuja hapa umoja yu tumepita hapa, lakini Kayore tumefungua kanisa. Si tutembere on Sunday. That was on, uh, that, that was on, uh, that, that was on a Saturday. So ni kamambia ni sawa. And in fact, we went on Sunday. And uh, what happened, when I went, uh, when I, I was in college, two sermons were preached. And uh, marambiri ni kataka kuokoka, lakini watu wakaingia kwa festri, kwa hii si bomani, si kuokoka. Lakini sikuwira nilienda uko, the two sermons were preached as one sermon. Na mimi, I gave my life to Jesus on 18th August 1996. And because I was on fire, I, I, I continued to, I, I, I could tell people about Jesus. And in our approach, one of the ladies who was in our approach, who was our family friend, uh, I, I, I witnessed to her, and she gave her life to Jesus. I think she was the first person who, who, became, who I witnessed to, and she became a born-again Christian. Later that, uh, that lady, where we introduced her to, to our church, to the new believers, na akaenderea, and badae, wakaweza kupatana kwa yuthi, alikuwa mwana yuthi, na, mwana yuthi, na, even, even the gentleman who had invited me in the church was also a youth. God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Mimi si kuwa introduce, lakini na kuambia, ure dada ambaye niri witness to, badae ndi walikutana na huyu jamaa ambaye niambia nienda kanisa, and today they are husband and wife. Na watoto watatu. Eh? So, uyo mutu tu alini invite. Na kuni invite tu uh, mirako yake ilikuwa hapo. Na akapata, uh, akapata muke. Hmm? Na hata leo, watoto wa hata wamemaliza university. I think ni watoto wa wili wamemaliza university. Eh? And we give God the, all, all the glory. So, ni meweka pause, lakini so to, to marizie. So the, uh, what, the question that I would, uh, even as I conclude, what would you like to be remembered for? By your children, by even those that you interact with, either in the marketplace or where, uh, in, which other, uh, in which, wherever, which other, uh, uh, which, whichever other place. So we need to be delivered in, in sowing seeds because as, we, as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And we have seen that we can do this by laying a strong spiritual foundation or living a godly or spiritual heritage. We can do so also by building covenant or meaningful relationship because this will positively impact your generations. We can also, by, we can also do so by being bridge builders for others, by doing acts of kindness. And as we, as we, as we, uh, as we have we heard from John 15, Jesus remains the true vine and we are the branches. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in the vine. For those of us who are, are well and born again, it's important to be connected and to remain connected. And you should live, in, uh, you should be, uh, you should live right because you don't know the day or the hour. We need to remain prepared because heaven is the place for the prepared. And for you, if you are not here and do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you can, also, uh, uh, you, you, you can also accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. He has said that he is the true vine, and we are the branches. Without him, we can do nothing. But when we, uh, we are binding him and he abides in us, and his word abides in us, he has said that we will bear fruits, fruits that, that will last. And by bearing fruits, we will be known to be his disciples. So are you there and do not know Jesus? as Lord and Savior of your life. So if you, are there, if you are there, you can raise your hand. We are going to pray together. And Jesus is going to come into your life because Jesus saves, he sustains, and he satisfies. I'm a witness of that. 
So are you there and you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? So even after this, you can speak to any of the readers here and you'll be directed or even you speak to the usher, uh, they will assist you and, uh, and that will be uh, good. So as we have said, let's, uh, even in this week, even as we continue in our walk of faith, let us, let us purpose to sow good seeds that bear much fruits to the glory of God. As we receive the blessing, God received all the honor. Let's stand up even as we pray. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, and we want to glorify you, Lord, for your reign. Lord, you reign forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for reigning a table for us, King of glory. Lord, even as you have reminded us, King of glory, that, Lord, we need to sow good seeds that, that bear much fruit. And Heavenly Father, Lord, cause us, King of glory, to continue, Lord, to be connected with you because you remain the true vine and we the branches, that we may bear much fruit to the honor and to the praise of your holy name. That, Lord, through our fruits, Jehovah God, we will continue to manifest, Lord, as your disciples, King of glory, to the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm praying, King of glory, that, Lord, cause us to be deliberate, even in rings, uh, 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 rings strong spiritual foundations, Lord, or even God or spiritual heritage, even for our children, Lord, and those around us, King of glory. Cause us, Heavenly Father, Lord, also to uh, create, Lord, uh, uh, covenant, Lord, of meaningful relationship with others, Jehovah God. You have blessed us, Lord, that we may be a blessing to many king of glory. Continue to cause also many to be a blessing to us, Heavenly Father. Cause us also to be bridge, uh, bridge builders, king of glory. That, Lord, you will be intentional, Lord, in, in showing acts of kindness to others, Lord, to the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Be glorified and be exalted. Lord, even as your people begin a new week, Jehovah God, may you go before them, may you be their rear guard, give them victory in every area of their lives, continue to give them new songs, songs of victory, because you are God and there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.